All right, who's first? We watched tight last week. What what'd you think? Last week's game? Yeah. Not very good. Not very good up front. Um, and I think we had a combination of things going on. Um, we had a couple guys in there that obviously uh, was their first time to ever play in a college football game, first time for this group to play together. And with different guys, it was kind of a different set of factors. I had a couple of guys, I think, at times that were just a little bit um, awestruck with the whole situation, just being in their first college game, played nervous, played a little bit hesitant, and uh, just you know didn't, didn't really ever cut it loose. Had a couple of guys that were just the opposite, were like at times overly aggressive and out of control, which isn't any good either. I would certainly rather have that than the other because I can teach and coach that if a guy wants to give great effort. But in the offensive line, I always tell the guys, you got to start the block under control, then finish it mad. But you can't go mad from the very start and just try to knock somebody's head out because you get overextended and, and you wind up just missing people. So we had a number of things going on. Is, is there any, any possibility of any changes in the lineup this week? Well, I don't know that there would be any change this week necessarily, but what I always tell the guys is, hey, you, you got to earn your position every week. And um, there's ongoing competition. And I told them, I told them all uh, a number of different stories this week about situations I've had in the past where we started off a season and uh, something happened with a guy and didn't perform well, and, and he finally got to the point where it just pissed me off enough that he was done right in the middle of a game, never to be heard from again. And he was a fifth-year <laughs> senior that had started four years and uh, missed the last half of his senior year because he wasn't playing hard and wasn't playing well. Uh, I've had some other situations where I had some young guys that weren't quite ready at the beginning of the season, but as the season progressed, they became ready and, and outperformed some other guys who I think just felt like they were entitled to positions. And I'm not saying that's going on here, but I wanted to just make sure that they were aware of, of some of the different things that can happen. And, and you know, I think everybody's got to know if you don't if you don't perform on Saturdays, then there are always other options. Do you anticipate Brandon staying at left tackle? I don't see any reason right now that, that we need to change that, but Brandon can play either, you know, and, and some guys, particularly young guys, you don't want to you don't want to play on both sides. You know, the advantage of having a guy like Brandon, um, Jared Cooper, John Solon, again, those guys don't have a ton of experience, but they've been in the system long enough that they've done different things, and that's really important this year because we don't have a lot of depth, not a lot of, of quality depth. And so um, there just aren't that many guys that are ready to play. So at times we might end up having to mix and match guys. You know, a guy goes down here, you got to move somebody to a different spot or what have you. So we got a few of those guys that could move around if if we felt like we needed to, either because of injury or just because somebody was playing better than somebody else. Talk about Reese to speak towards the side in the first first. Well, the, the, the thing that Reese did well is he did a good job communicating. Um, and, you know, in your first game with a bunch of new guys playing together, that's always the first concern is how are these guys going to communicate? Are we going to identify the fronts and make all the calls correctly? particularly with the defense that we didn't really know what we were going to see coming in um, and the mixture of odd and even fronts. Uh, but he did a really nice job communicating. Um, but he was, uh, I'm sure he'd be the first to tell you that, that he didn't play up to, uh, uh, up to what, his, what his level of capability is. But again, he's a true freshman. It's his first game to ever play. And, and I have absolute confidence that, that he'll get better every week. I had a Blake do it going. But did okay. But I would lump him in with everybody else. Nobody did well enough for us to, to win games in this league. Now that they kind of had a chance to play together, you feel like it, it really helps them now that they go into week two, having a chance to kind of look back and see what they did in the game, you know, t what they talked about, playing together for the first time. Yeah, I think playing together, but also just with young guys, you should have your greatest opportunity of growth between game one and game two. Now it'll continue to grow as the season goes on, but you have your first real evaluation of what a guy's going to do in the stadium against another opponent um, on game day, and you find out where you are. He finds out where he is, and then um, you, you've got you know at least a starting point to work with. So I think I think they'll all be better because of the experience, and I think that you know those those moments of shared experiences, whether it's good or bad or, or some of both, 
that that'll develop cohesion within the group in time. So talking about Mississippi State, it's always a pretty physical one. They're, they're coming off of it. we're just struggling to run it some last week. They're probably going to come in and challenge you again. Like well, that. that's there's no question that they're going to anyway. They did last year, um, and they are a very physical team. Um, their front plays really well, very aggressive. Um, number 94 and number 97, I think, are probably as as good of a pair of defensive tackles as we'll see all year. Um, and, you know, we played them last year early, and I thought they were good then. But I didn't ever go back, and, you know, we played them early, so I didn't see the rest of the year. And, man, those two guys really came on. I mean, the rest of the year, I'm looking at the end of the, of the year and, and the way that those two guys are playing. I mean, they are just making it unbelievably difficult for, for people to run the football between the tackles. And, um, you know, they play an upfield, hard-charging style with their defensive tackles, and they're going to try to get upfield and disrupt your run game. And, and just, just uh, you know, those two guys both have the size and the suddenness and the speed. They, they're the total package. I think both of them are. I think it's I think they're pretty comparable to the 2D tackles we played last year at Clemson, number 98 and 99. And those two guys gave us issues as well. But it'll be a great challenge <coughs> for us, for sure. Okay. See y'all. Oh, question. We have anybody else?